Today on the show, I'm happy to have Remy and Abbas, the co-founders of Umaker AI. It's AI that can predict your upcoming exam questions. And we're just talking about having to plow through brick walls in the dark. With no helmet. So Abbas, what has happened through this startup journey so far? I think in summary, there's been a lot of, a lot of tears, a lot of sweat, a lot of late nights. It's just been a crazy journey, absolutely crazy journey. Nothing could have prepared me or indeed Remy for, for the journey. And yeah, it's been, it's been monumental. A lot of milestones along the way. The story started, I, I was losing hope in investment banking, soul searching and looking for a business. And then Rami and I went out for dinner randomly and I told him I was looking for a business idea and he's, I've got one. And I was like, great, let's do it. <laughs> That's how it happened. We just jumped head first into Rami's idea. And here we are six years later, still living the dream. <laughs> That's it. So basically we started Umaker as a platform to help people prototype their inventions through 3D printing. That was the original idea. It's, it's an inventions platform. And a few years later, we don't know how we went from 3D printing to helping students with their exams, but here we are. And so you can just imagine <laughs> how the, the ups and downs and the trials and it so that we had to, to, to go through in order to get here. And basically it's a condensed story of where we are today. How many years into it are you now? Oh, uh, we incorporated in 2017. So it's been six years now, but we did a lot of things in those six years. We weren't, we weren't trying just to make one thing work. And that's the one thing that we've learned is you should never be married to your idea, if that makes sense. You should absolutely never give up on your business. Always push through with the business, but hold the idea loose, hold the vision loosely, try and figure out what, what sticks in the market. And that's what we've been trying to do, find product market fit ever since. So what exactly changed or happened that landed you in exam prep? Okay, so basically the chronology is like this. We had an inventions platform. We tried to attract inventors. They didn't come. They didn't, it just it wasn't appealing to them. The one thing we've learned about inventors is they are paranoid by nature. They just don't want to share their idea with anybody. And so a platform just didn't stick. However, we did get customers nevertheless. Those customers were students, engineering students. And when they want, what they wanted to use Umaker for was to prototype their final year project. So then they come onto the platform, they work with experts and they get that done. Once they prototype their platform, yeah. sorry, once they prototype their product, they come onto the platform and then they keep asking us, now I need to write a report around this product that I've just built. Can you help with the report as well? And we started thinking, how do we do this? Do we invite people who can write reports? How, how do, we, do, do we do this? And so I came across at the time, a paper around large language models and how that can be used to generate content. This was way before AI was sexy. I started tinkering with that and it worked. We could actually generate final year project reports using large language models. And we launched an MVP and within months, it just blew up. Within months, we got 100,000 users. People absolutely loved it. And with that success, we, we thought like we're, we're onto something. Like let's really refine this tool, roll it out to students and have them write their assignments using AI. Until ChatGPT came out. <laughs> In which case, that was obviously far more popular than, than us and it was free and um, we lost a lot of users when that happened. And so our latest iteration is rather than focusing on the writing assignments, we've actually used what we've learned from AI to do something that ChatGPT cannot do, nor any other AI can do. It basically predicts your upcoming exam questions with a certain level of accuracy to help you narrow down what you're meant to study. And we think that's, that's just like as exciting as our previous products. 
what information does a student come in and need to provide to your tool to then be able to see what their predictions are? I'm actually on my way to Thailand end of this month, God willing, so learning a little bit about their culture. One thing they have in Thailand, they have a saying, they're basically saying exams are the same, but different. And every time you have something that is same, different, you can build a model to predict it. This is essentially what we've done with, with exams is we've, we're looking at previous exams. We're looking at whatever information the student can upload and the more they can give us, the more accuracy our resemblance questions will. So that's, that's essentially how we do it at a, at a very high level, uh, is we look at whatever material can be uploaded about that particular subject and we figure out the best, the best questions or the most relevant questions that are likely to come up. I can see why this product is so popular. This is like every student's dream to be able to predict their test questions. So since this shift has now the growth started again. So this is something that we are launching on a wait list currently. We haven't actually launched this feature, but we're getting a lot of excitement from the students that are already on you maker who are using our previous products, let them know about what we're working on and they just can't wait. So yeah, we think it's a, it's a big deal. So is this your guys first startup? So I've been kind of angel investing for the better part of a decade. So I've been involved in the kind of like London tech ecosystem, either as an advisor or as a consultant, but in terms of like the, the, the entrepreneurial kind of take the bull by the horns type of initiative, this is my first one. And now you're getting to see the quick adaptations that are required on a constant basis. Yeah. So what's been your experience with now you've had to shift like five or six times. Are you ready for the next 10 that you're going to have? I think the first one was probably the hardest because I think as Rami's alluded to previously, like letting go of your initial original idea is it takes, it takes some courage, I would say, just because you're so attached to it and it's your dream to make that work. But we've always been very much user focused and we go to where the users want us to go. And so with each hypothesis, with each test that we perform, with each amount of feedback that we get, and then subsequently with each iteration that we make, the process becomes easier and easier just because you're constantly refining and refining. And then it's less about you and what you think. It's always about what the user thinks and what the user wants. And so I think with each iteration, with each revolution, the journey becomes, I think, much, much faster, much more efficient, just because you've been there previously. So I'm not sure what the future holds. We think we're onto something here and God willing, it'll, it'll be, it'll be successful. And what's your guys' background that landed you in actually building AI models? Yeah. So just back to your questions about the startup. So this, whilst this is our first first startup, it isn't mine. So I own a previous venture called Site Electricity. Basically, we had built and prototyped an electric bike, launched it, and it became a successful company. My background was physics. I've always invented stuff. I've always built stuff, a bit of engineering. Now, when AI came into the picture, especially large language models, this is a new field, like it's something un uncharted. And so when I came across it, it was basically just an academic research at the time. But it blew me away. I was like, if this works, really could change entire industries. I knew it was going to be a big deal. I didn't expect it to be that big as, as it is now, but, but I, I knew it was a big deal because it was such a new thing. I had to learn it from scratch only because I was so interested in it. And I thought it could be relevant to our users as well. We can make it work. It can help a lot of students on our platform. I just had to learn it from scratch and from those learnings, we're building these new calls. So if some of our listeners who are students wanted to learn more about Umaker or get in touch, how could they do so? Just go to umaker.ai. It's umaker without an E. So umaker.ai and would love to have you. Well, thank you, Remy and Abbas for coming on the show today. And thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Mm -hmm.